and there's a lot of greed. I was just talking to Miriam about the fact that, uh, you know, there's so much uh, that has uh, a lot of uh, industries and a lot of manpower goes into war. So it's, uh, you know, there are a lot of factions in our society that don't want the war to end because there's, you know, there's so much greed. Um, was there a movement during the Second World War where people tried to resolve that conflict in a non-violent way? I'm sure that there must have been, but I only say that because of knowing Quakers and other people who are pacifists, uh, that uh, that it, it would have happened. Uh, I was not of an age, and I wasn't a Quaker yet, so uh, I can't speak from first-hand knowledge. How about the Vietnam War? Oh, I was very involved at that time and uh, went to Vietnam and uh, met with people there, and, uh, tried to not only get uh, news of what they needed, practically, but also to say, you know, we're here, we're, you're not forgotten, we, we're with you. I understand that you speaking out during the Vietnam War um, actually was threatening to you personally? Well, yes, uh, it was, and uh, I, but that's true. It, it's true when we walked with Martin Luther King, too. I mean, when there's anybody who wants to uh, do things a different way, then there's going to be trouble, even if that different way is seen by many people as harmless. It's not seen by those who want to accomplish whatever it is you're trying to block, whether you're armed or not. Uh, so it's, it's never without risk. If you're going, to, if you're going to do any good in an entrenched situation of violence, uh, there's risk. And you actually felt threatened. Oh yes, yeah. It 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 was scary sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, not me per se, but me what I represented, which was. Uh, uh, a threat to a way of life that to some people was important. Could you tell me what you know about um, the efforts that were made to prevent the Second World War? Um, if, uh, okay, let's see how I guess so. Uh, during the uh, build up to the Munich Conference to take Czechoslovakia, well, to take just that little part of Czechoslovakia that he wanted, the Sudetenland, I remember that's all they agreed to, uh, uh, to take the northern part of, northeastern part of Czechoslovakia. The German military, um, elements in the German military, the German government, um, even some members of the business community, although that, was <laughs> that wasn't very well represented, had, uh, had a plan, and, had a plan in, in, uh, and they told the British about it. They told them, you know, they, they, they sent, they sent, they sent, uh, they sent uh, covert things over the, over the wire to tell the British about it. Hitler, uh, Churchill was very aware of it, uh, and the French about it. That just stand up to him. Just tell him no. You know, just just you know, send your things over and and and, and don't uh, and don't give him the uh, don't give him the Czechoslovakian demand, and we'll take care of him. And they had a military and communicate that they had they had tanks ready to roll. They had uh, to, to surround the to surround the. Uh, around the important building. They had quite a bit of support in the military at the time, um, uh, upper ranks and, and the rest. And it was all set to go. And then, of course, they gave him <laughs> the sedate land. Later, he took the rest of the, the Churchill. Made his the main people that involved in that plot went right back. You know, they were, okay, okay, we're screwed here. They went right back to work. They kept on going and going and going with other plots from, the, from, that, from that day until the June 44 plot. And one of the people that was a main... Um, uh, actor in that was Admiral, Admiral Canaris, so if you look that up, he was the head of the German intelligence service, the head of his own spy network. <laughs> so you were saying, you were saying that the um, Second World War could have been prevented in a non-violent way? Well, that coup was so well organized, there wouldn't have been any violence. He would have, he would have, he would have, he, he would have been taken out. And, and all they had to do was stand up to him at, at, at the, the Rhineland, when he took out, remilitarized the Rhineland. 
uh, the, 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 uh, the area that was supposed to be unmilitarized and stand up you know, in, in 1936 with the Anschluss. Every single step, especially of the first two steps, he wasn't ready for a war yet. He wasn't ready to start, start a war in 1936 when he, uh, when he, uh, when he remilitarized the areas that were supposed to be militarized, or 1937 with, with Austria. He wasn't ready. They, 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 they'd have all said, nope, that's one step too far, so you have to back down. He would have backed down. It seems to me that Chamberlain from Britain made an appeasement with, with the Nazis, and, and if he had stood up to them way before, something could have been done to stop it. They also, there was the idea that they figured that Hitler would turn on the Soviet Union on the east, and that's what they want. They wanted to get rid of the Soviet Union. So this is why they appeased the Nazis. If we educated the people differently, war would not be inevitable. And I think that's the answer. We have to educate, but we educate people to go out and fight. This is what we have to stop. Yeah. How can you do that, though? We're educating hockey players to go and kill the other people on the team. And, and, and we have uh, have the young boys playing with uh, video games. Yeah. Full training, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. too. Exactly. Most video games are very violent. Mm -hmm. Do you think Canada needs a military? Yes. We need a military for uh, uh, self-defense. But let them come on to us. Tsunamis, uh, earthquakes, that's what they should be there for. Natural yeah. disasters. For natural disasters, that's right. Yeah. And that's, that's what, what we need. Yes, I think we need an army but for doing different things, to, for floods to come in and, and, and help the Coast Guard in, uh, in the, uh, on the seas. And if anybody does attack us, we should be ready to defend ourselves. But so far, no one's uh, attacked us except the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think it's necessary to have a military? Uh. If it really were a, a civil defense force, maybe. If it really were a civil defense force in emergencies and things like that, the trouble is, um, you know, we call it Defense Department and we do all these other things with it. We are, you know, we're, 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 we're supposed to be a country that's only defending ourselves and we have 26, 700 people in Afghanistan. Do you think that Canada needs a military? Well, I think if we put... Uh, Canada, I think, doesn't... Uh, I think we need some of the things that the military provides. Uh, in other words, I believe in policemen. Uh, I wish they were all unarmed, but uh, I do believe we need to react to things when they're going wrong. We need, uh, I mean, I'd call the police if somebody had broken into my house. So I think it's nonviolence doesn't mean you sit back and say, uh, okay, anything goes. It means you see what are the creative ways to work in this particular situation.